Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm excited to do this training with you. I feel like this is needed. Um, I feel like I, I need to do this training like once every six months because it just happens in business. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how three ways to get out of a funk and, um, so any, you know, funks are pretty normal in business. If you're in a funk right now, it's normal. Um, earlier, like a couple years ago in 2019, I was on the struggle bus. I was going through a really hard time and it started to have an effect on my business too. In fact, um, during that time I went live to our team and I cried and I shared with you guys that I was struggling too. And um, uh, I'm looking at my notes, by the way, <laughs> because I think it's important that we show our teams that we struggle and that we're human too. So I went live and I, I cried and I was kind of sharing about my about being on the struggle bus. And I asked who else? I said, hey, comment below if you're struggling too. Um, comment with a heart if you're struggling with something else in your life. And you guys, so many people commented with a heart like it was crazy so um I like so many people are going through hard things in fact I would love for you to comment below if you're going through something hard right now comment with a heart if you're going through something hard right now I'll add my heart to it right there um and and often things and oftentimes they have nothing to do with our business right but um and sometimes they do and that's okay. Um, that's just life. That's part of being a human. We all struggle and that's normal. And so, um, and, and we all get deflated sometimes like a balloon. We get deflated. We lose our, we lose some air, but we don't want to let that defeat us. So today I'm going to be talking about three ways to, you know, get out of a funk, um, and continue on. And so just know that being in a funk is normal. It's part of the entrepreneurial um, roller coaster. There's going to be highs. There's going to be lows. And that's all part of the journey, you guys. So don't feel like you are this, um, this like lone wolf <laughs> that is, is, is on the struggle bus. Um, in fact, I'm seeing so, so many hearts. Um, one of you, Jennifer just wrote that she just got out of the hospital. I mean, yes, so many people are struggling. Um, so let me start with a story. I, uh, when a couple years ago in 2019, Color Street hosted a retreat for all the presidential, um, team and it was in New Jersey and we, st and after the whole retreat is over, I took a couple of my friends and teammates to um, the 9-11 Memorial Building. And because um, I had never been there before. I, I went in, I went like several years ago, probably um, it was right after 9-11 and it was just ground zero then. So I was so curious to see how, you know, the new Memorial Building looked when it was finally finished. So we went and did a tour and it was incredible and it was humbling and it was an amazing experience. Um, and afterwards I watched a video on YouTube and I will, I'll link to this video. Um, I watched a video that was a time-lapse video of how they rebuilt ground zero um, into the incredible memorial building that it is today. And every time I watch this video, it gives me chills. The video showed a bird's eye view of the builders taking consistent baby steps um, every day to rebuild that memorial. And you guys, it took them 10 years. It took them 10 years from 2004 to 2014 to rebuild this memorial. It took a ton of time and effort. It took, I'm sure the builders had 
lots of struggles. I'm sure they had lots of setbacks along the journey. I'm sure they had lots of hard days and lots of days that they probably wanted to quit or that they got bumps in the road, but they didn't give up. And as I watched that video and after visiting that memorial building and seeing it go from ground zero to what it is now, I just found it so symbolic of us as humans. Um, we, you know, sometimes we, things happen to us where we get knocked down and they're beyond our control and we fall like the twin towers. And, you know, we all hit rock bottom at some point. Um, in business too. That's part of, I've been in, I've been a girl boss. I've been working from home ever since my daughter was little and now she is 19, ever since she was a baby. So I've been doing this for 19 years. I've seen some patterns. I promise you there's, you're going to have days where you're in a funk. You're going to have weeks, maybe even months. Um, and that's okay. And that, again, it's part of that process, but we can, we can learn from it. And there are going to be times where you hit rock bottom and you're, you want to quit. Um, we can all learn from it and we can start the beautiful process of rebuilding and, and becoming a greater version of ourselves than we ever envisioned. Um, we can rise up to rebuild. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about three way, three F words. You know, I love my F words. <laughs> my last name is France. I mean, come on. Um, so I'm going to talk about three word F words to help you rise up and rebuild yourself when you fall or when you get in a funk in your business. Um, so the three F words are, uh, we're going to talk about fundamentals, focus, and fun. So get ready to take some notes. Um, to help you get out of a funk. So think, anytime you're in a funk, I want you to think of the two, there's two of those words have the word fun in it. There's, a, so funk, think of fundamentals, fun, and then focus. Um, so you, you might need to take a step back when you're in a funk to really focus on the fundamentals um, and, and really look at your life and evaluate what it is that has you in a funk. So it might take, you might need to take a short break to get some fresh perspective. I want you to think about it like if you were a fly on the wall of the Sistine, Michelangelo, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, and you were just right there on the wall, would you realize the, would you see the bigger picture if you were landed on that Sistine Chapel? You wouldn't, right? Because you'd be so close to it that you couldn't see the bigger picture. So sometimes you have to take a step back. You have to fly back as if you're a fly on that Sistine Chapel. Take a step back and really look at the big picture and really look at, um, you know, get some get some perspective, get some fresh perspective. And, and then you've got to ask yourself, why? Why am I feeling burnout? Is it, you know, is this because of business or is this, is there something in my personal life that I need to, you know, um, get in order? Um, and, and then ask yourself why that is the question asking yourself, why did you initially start color street? What was your why when you first started at color street? Um, what, like, cause sometimes we forget our why it's like, even it's like when you, you know, have this big why to like start a fitness journey, um, or whatever we, it's easy once you get started to be like, screw this. I'm, I'm, I want to eat chips. Like <laughs> I'm done. Um, and so we have to remember why we started. So I want you to really step back and, and remember, why did you start this color street journey in the first place? Um, and, and then at, and what were you, what are you working towards? What do you want from this, you know, this experience? What do you want from your color street experience? Really step back and ask, why and um and i think your why needs to be out of love instead of fear so were you chasing a carrot or were you running from a bear um and so your why and your why needs to be bigger than you i feel like the best whys and and don't judge your why like if you're like oh my why's not good enough don't do that please like um but i really think it helps i'm not going to should you because nobody should be shooting 
themselves. Nobody should be a should head. Um, so I'm not going to tell you what your your why should be, but I do think I do think it helps when your why is bigger than you. So um, having a why that is like, well, I want to do this for my family. Like I have big goals, and that was what it was for me. I had big goals for my family. Like I wanted to retire my husband. I wanted to um, pay off all our medical debt, all our student loans. I wanted to, um, like, I had huge goals. I wanted to stop living paycheck to paycheck. I wanted to not have to think twice about adding guacamole. Those were my big goals. And so, and, and those didn't have a lot to do with me. It was about my family. I wanted a better life for my four kids. I wanted to stop having to put back groceries all the time, all the time. I wanted to stop having to tell my kids no for basic things that they wanted. Um, I I just wanted a better life for them. And so I hustled hard. I worked hard for that. Um, <laughs> I love your your guacamole, your avocado emoji. Love that. Um, and so when you have a goal that is bigger than you, it because here's the real here's the real deal. Here's the actual truth. It's easy to let yourself down. It's a lot harder to let other people down. It's a lot harder to let your family down. It's a lot harder to let your team down, right? And so, um, and we tend to do that as women. We tend to put ourselves on the back burner. But when our why is bigger than us, oh, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to do what we can to make it work because we don't want to disappoint others. Am I right? And so that's why it's important to make your why bigger than you. You know, I was just thinking about this today. I, you know, I have a goal. I I gained some COVID weight. Let's, I mean, who didn't? Um, And so I I wouldn't mind losing a few pounds before the Color Street Conference. And so I have this goal to do that. But I was like, you know, if I really, really, if I had a better, a, a, a more helpful why would be just trying to get my family to eat healthier. Trying to get my, you know, trying that to me, that's extends beyond me. Um, Extends beyond looking good in my dress, right? And that can be more motivating sometimes. So I want to encourage you guys to create a vision board um, that excites you. Like create, start thinking of why you started. And if you can't even remember why you started, well, let's figure out why you're going to keep going. Let's figure out what it is that you're excited about, that you're pushing for, that you're working towards every day. Um, and that why is going to change. So maybe you started out and you, you know, my why has totally changed now because I've reached some of those goals that I shared with you. Um, so now I have different goals. Like I have, I want to buy an Airbnb. I want to, um, be able to afford a house that I can like, you know, um, I can rent out as an Airbnb. So things like that. Um, just start dreaming bigger and bigger and put it out into the universe, put it on a Pinterest board in the, um, and, or create like a, put it on a poster board, put it on a collage and make it your phone wallpaper. You got to remember why you started. And that's why it's important. I would highly recommend putting your why on um, like your phone wallpaper so you can remember that. Um, Another thing, you know, I, so in my previous direct sales company, I remember I was really in a funk. I was focusing on things I couldn't control. I was comparing myself to the other girls um, in the company. I was annoyed that my upline wasn't recognizing me. Um, And I asked my upline, I was discouraged. I was frustrated. I asked, I asked my upline who was in the top 10 in her company for advice. And she gave me the best advice that I've ever gotten for uh, my direct sales business. And that was, she said two words. She said, show up, show up. And she said, show up and work your business. That means show up and work your business, show up on Instagram and stories, show up in your VIP group, show up and build relationships, show up and reach out to say hi or thank you or I'm thinking of you. 
show up and help others. Show up and find someone to do their nails. Um, show up to trainings like this. Show up to the Color Street trainings. Um, show up to the Color Street conference. Show up and do the work. That was the best advice ever because it's easy when you're in a funk to peace out. It's easy to hide, right? Um, but when she said that, I was like, okay, I can do that. I can show up, even if I don't always wanna show up. Um, even if I'm not 100% consistent, I'm still gonna really make an effort to show up. So so you really, I, I, you really do have to show up to succeed, right? And um, I love this quote so much by Will Smith. He said, the only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. I will not be outworked, period. You might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all those things you got on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, there's two things. You're getting off first or I'm going to die. It's really that simple. I love that quote so much because guess what? So many people in direct sales quit before the miracle. They quit before things really start before the momentum starts getting going. And, but that's not going to be you. That's not going to be you because you know, it's not a matter of if you reach your goals, it's when, if you stick around, if you are consistent, if you do those baby steps every day, you will be able to build your empire. You'll be able to build your, um, your, you know, just like the memorial, the 9-11 Memorial. It took them 10 freaking years, guys. 10 years. It's going to take you more than three months to build an empire, right? Um, it, it takes a long time and that's okay because if you show up, then it's going to happen. It's, it's not a matter of if, but when, if you're consistent um, and you're committed and, and, and you got committed is super important. When you're committed, I was, I was lecturing my daughter. I'm like, when you're committed, you don't ask yourself, should I show up? Should I do the work? You ask yourself, how should I? Because you are, you're, you're in, you're all in. So um, <laughs> I love that. Jackie, Jackie New just commented and said, I always tell my team, I don't go to bed when I'm tired. I go to bed when I'm done. Oof, girl, love it. Um, the next F word is focus and what you focus on expands. So what have you been focusing on lately? Have you been focusing on color street or has your focus been elsewhere? And, um, there's no judgment if your focus has been elsewhere. If you're, I mean, lately, uh, I've got three teenagers right now. Um, it's kicking my butt. My focus has been on, on them lately. So, so that's going to take up more of my time, right? Whatever you focus on takes a lot of your time. And so, um, but the question is, are you overfeeding the problem or are you starving the solution? Because it's easy when you're in a funk or when you're not seeing results to start complaining and start being like, well, if I had a better upline or if I, you know, or, oh, if I had started on day one, I would blah, 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 right? We'd start focusing on all these problems. And so those problems get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're not feeding the solution. We're, we're starving the solution. So start focusing on solutions. Start focusing on different ways that you can bonus qualify. And if one doesn't work, that's okay. We fail it till we nail it on Team Nailed It. We fail it till we nail it. So if you try one thing that maybe worked for someone else, that's okay. Because it's not not everything that people share that works for someone else is going to work for you. Um, so, you know, it's like the Sistine Chapel. What are you zooming in on? Like I was, um, I, I listened to a talk at church where they were talking, this this woman did 
uh, she was a photographer, which I used to be a photographer, so this really resonated with me. And she did a, she showed some slides of like dirt and dust balls and, um, or it was like dirt and weeds and whatever. And then she zoomed back a little and it was like a patch of, you know, weeds and like a cracked sidewalk or whatever. And then she zoomed back a little and it was like, uh, you know, like a, a sidewalk and a little bit of street and maybe a tree. And then she zoomed back a little and it was like this beautiful landscape with a gorgeous sunset. And sh she was like, what are you zooming in on? Right? So sometimes we're so focused on the tiny little thing. We don't see the beautiful big picture. And there's so much potential in this business. Like there's so many wonderful things that can come from this business, whether it be being able to travel and go on the amazing trips that they offer, whether it be making so many friends from our amazing community, whether it be um, being able to like pay for your own shoes without having to ask your husband, whatever. There's so many, like there are, there is so much potential for you. You're literally working a million dollar business. You are the CEO of a potentially million dollar business. So start treating it like one. Um, and so that means staying focused. So maybe, maybe you do five minutes of focus. Like if you're having a hard time focus, focusing, which I think we all, it's hard with kids or um, social media distractions or whatever, set your timer for five minutes and work on your business five minutes at a time or time block. I'll, I have a whole, I need to do a whole nother video about time blocking. I did one recently, but I came up with an even an awesome way to time block. I'll talk about that later, but, um, or in another, another video, but, um, and then set work hours, guys. It's really hard to work if you don't have, like, if you keep constantly getting interrupted. Find a workspace. Set work hours. Um, focus on income-producing activities. I see so many people chatting it up in Facebook message threads. Um, and that's fine because we love our community, right? But it's like, okay, how much time are you doing that versus working versus doing income-producing activities? So really step back and ask yourself, how many income producing activities have I done today? Um, and then a really good book that helps you is called The One Thing. And it just talks about what to focus on. And it talks about focusing on less, um, but better. It's incredible. That one and Essentialism are really great books for focusing. They really change the way that I do my business because I focus on less, but better. I focus on the things that are going to get me big results rather than the tiny little details that are not are not going to be are not going to move the needle um listening to personal development often you guys it's our mindset not our skill that holds us back usually we are the ones that get in our own way so um and listen and listening to personal development books or podcasts is usually the first thing that to go when we're struggling, but often it's the very thing we need to get us out of a funk and take our business to the next level. So please, please make that a priority. List that is going to change your life. It has changed my life so much, completely. Listening to, um, this is the one I'm reading right now. It's called Effortless. So good. It talks about making things easy that you, uh, that, you've probably been overcomplicating. So good. Um, so focus. All right. Finally, fun. Let's talk about fun. That is my jam. I love having fun. And so if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. So you got to put the fun back into your business. Um, go from being in a funk to having fun. And so um, what parts are not fun in your business? I want you to really ask yourself, what parts are not fun? And how can you delegate that? What are the things that you hate and that you procrastinate? How can you delegate that? Can you ask your husband to maybe stop by the post office and drop those things off on his way to work? Could you pay your kids to package up nails? Um, could you hire an assistant? to do those things. Um, what, what things can you delegate or eliminate? Because not all things are necessary for 
uh, making money? Like, is it really making you money? Ask, I don't know. It's a good thing to ask yourself. Um, so that's going to help a lot. <laughs> I promise you that's going to, that's going to change all the things. If you delegate and eliminate some of those things, um, the other thing is to, let's see, like just little, a little bit of self-care goes a long way, by the way, you know, take care of yourself because fill your cup first. Um, because if you're running on empty, how can you pour into your customers and your team, right? Work smarter, not harder. And what can you do to make things more fun? Maybe, um, one thing that, that really helped me this year was um, a couple months ago when we did the Elite 300, when, you know, I feel like a lot of us were kind of in a funk a couple months ago. And so the senior executives on my team all got together and we did a big push training for our team. And it was so fun to collaborate. So collaborate, find someone in our team. We have such a, a big team, find someone you know, do a post in Team Nailed It and say, hey, I want to collaborate with someone and do X, Y, Z. It's way more fun to do things. It, with, we are better together. It's way more fun to do things with someone else. So if you're in a funk, find someone else to collaborate with. Um, and let's see, to think back on the times when you've had the most fun in your business and do more of that. Maybe it was lives. Maybe you love to go live and dress up. Maybe it was events. Um, maybe it was in-person parties or mentoring stylists or um, doing Zoom calls. Whatever it is, think back on the times that you had the most fun and do it some more. Because when you have good vibes and good energy from doing what you love, you'll attract more customers and more potential stylists because enthusiasm and happiness are contagious. Um, so I'm gonna leave you guys with a challenge. I, What would your business look like if you gave out 100 samples before the Color Street Conference? Um, because you wanna be planting seeds. The seeds that you plant now they will pay off in the fall. That's just a fact. I know summer gets crazy. My kids' last day of school is today. It's like, oh boy, I just got you back in school because we're in California and <laughs> they just barely went back uh, full time. Anyway, now they're home and it's madness again. Um, but I know it's crazy in the summer, but uh we, we just modify. When things get hard, we modify. We don't quit. They always say that in like workouts. We modify, we don't quit. Um, so what would your business look like if you gave out 100 samples before conference? I am going to give you guys the 100 samples challenge. This is something I did at the very biz beginning of our Color Street journey. I, I challenged everyone on our team to give out 100 samples. You guys, samples are the bread and butter of our business. People, I've had people join my my team just from trying a sample, just from, they got a sample. They were like, these are amazing. I, how can I become a stylist? Um, so making sure you send out those samples. And that means maybe doing a couple posts on social media. Who wants a sample? Doing a story. Who wants a sample? Um, messaging some people and being like, Hey, I'm not sure if I've given you a sample yet. These are so fun. Would you like, what's your address? And I'll send one in the mail. Nobody's going to complain about getting a free gift in the mail. Um, so that's my challenge to you to kind of help you get out of whatever funk you might be in. And if you're not in a funk, still do it because this is going to move your business forward. Um, so I hope this has helped you guys. Remember when you are in a funk to remember those F. So you got funk, the word funk. Think of the other F-U-N words. Focus on the fundamentals. Bring the fun back and, and, uh, and get focused. All right. I hope this helped you. I love y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.